Good morning folks. Just a small ride today. Just back from Europe where I was on business. And uh, <coughs> missed my bike. Came back yesterday, Saturday. Didn't get a chance to go for a ride of course because I came back uh, after 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. I was kind of tired having, having flown back from, from Germany. And uh, so now I'm out for a ride. couple of things on my mind that I'm going to talk about um, one of which I guess is uh, me putting the uh, power device microphone back uh, into the helmet uh, because uh, the little cheapo microphone that I bought uh, that had a TRS plug uh, only recorded on one channel and actually the sound wasn't as good as, uh, as the sound from the Power Device microphone. Power Device microphone has got a TRRS plug, so that means that I need to use an adapter to go from TRRS to TRS um, so that I can plug into this stupid uh, GoPro dongle, which we all love, eh? So anyway, I put that back in since the sound was so crappy um, from the uh, from the cheap microphone that I bought that I said, well, I'll have to live with that uh, additional adapter to go from TRRS to TRS. Even though occasionally in the past, for some reason, I would get no sound in my video. So that's that. So that's a test, just a test to make sure everything is working back again. Uh, that's one of the reasons for this vlog, aside from going for a ride. The other thing I wanted to mention was that the R uh, 1250RS is now in my dealership, the dealership that I like to to uh, to visit. And uh, the salesman called me when I was in Germany to say, "Hey, Wayne, uh, we've got." couple of 1250s here uh, I know you wanted me to call you when they came in so I says yeah <laughs> unfortunately I'm in Germany though home of the uh, home of the RS of course but uh, you know funnily enough while I was there I hardly saw maybe I saw two BMWs the rest of them were other types of bikes definitely not not uh, no RS's um, I didn't see any boxers uh, it's weird I was in Hamburg and uh, there were a lot of motorcycles around, but not too many BMWs and definitely no boxers I saw. Strange. So anyway, um, they've got an R the two RSs there in the in the showroom. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go test ride them most likely next week. And then put the video out on the website. Uh, what I hope to do is uh, I hope to have an unaccompanied test ride. I don't like when I have a babysitter on it. Not that I'm going to go crazy or anything with this, with the bike, but uh, you know, uh, I like to be able to stop in a parking lot somewhere, take some pictures, talk about it, this and that. And if you got a babysitter, then it's not so easy because I can't expect him to just stand around while I'm doing all of this stuff. So I already told them that I wanted to make a video, a uh, video review, so hopefully they get the message uh, uh, that I need to go alone. So what I'd like to do uh, also is to have my RS side by side with the R1250 next to it and do a comparison. I know it's going to take some time. But do side by side comparison feature by feature and then go for a spin on the bike. Um, of course I won't have the bike for that long, even if I go by myself. Um, I won't have the bike for that long. But hopefully it'll be enough for me to get a first a good first impression uh, to compare um, the R1250 with this one. This bike has got uh, let me see. I'll tell you in a second. This bike has got 40,000 miles on it, 40,500 miles, and uh, so it's well broken in. It's been to Canada once, it's been interstate many times, 
It brings me to work every day. It's as free as the engine is going to get. I've got a Remus exhaust on it. And that is, I believe, freed up a couple of... Uh, uh, and also, um, I've got a K&M filter on it as well. And that has freed up some, uh, some ponies. Freed up some, uh, a little bit of torque, I think. Um, so it'll be interesting to compare my bike with the 1250. I expect the 1250 is going to be smoother. The transmission is supposed to be smoother. And uh, although from some of the reviews that I've heard so far, uh, the quick shifter is still not not the same as a quick shifter on a four cylinder. <laughs> it's still a little uh, rough in some spots, and I suspect that might that might be uh, the change from first to second. Um, it's always a little bit rough on these bikes, so much so that I don't use the quick shifter very often between in going up between first and second. I usually uh, use it more, you know, second, third, to fourth, to fifth, to sixth, um, and then back down. Uh, using the auto blipper um, right down to second and um, the one thing a lot of people don't realize is uh, the more aggressively you ride the bike is the smoother the quick shifter works uh, you can't just uh, expect it to, to work smoothly if you're going gently uh, with the throttle you know uh, the harder you ride it, the more angrily, angrily you ride it, the smoother the, sh the quick shifter gets. <laughs> That's kind of weird. Anyway, uh, yeah, I want to I want to compare that. Um, depending on if I get to go by myself, where the dealership is located, uh, I might not be able to go on any twisties as such. So it'll be hard for me to kind of uh, assess. How, how she performs, uh, you know, on the on the curves. So I'd have to kind of make that assessment based on just the, the writing that I do get to do. But let's see how it goes. I mean, I can't tell uh, from now how that re uh, review is going to go. Uh, just to say that uh, hopefully I get a chance to do a good review on the 1250 and then to put the video up on the website. So that's one of the reasons that I want to make sure that my vlogging setup is working well and uh, everything is in good good shape uh, for that uh, review. Another reason why I'm coming out today is uh, I have not, I've, uh, if you looked at my last videos, uh, you'll notice that I switched over from a Senna to a Cardo uh, system for my headset. So my wife's helmet has got a Cardo um, free talk, I guess, free something too. And I've got the Pack Talk Bold, and um, we've tested it, and uh, <laughs> much to our surprise, that the intercom worked very well, uh, even though I, I had some doubts about it, and I think I'm owing you guys a, a review of that. One thing that I have not tested so far is the volume of the music when I'm listening uh, to the music uh, at 75 miles an hour. Because I didn't listen to my music when I was riding with my wife, which was the only other time that I got a chance to test this thing, you know, on the highway. So I wasn't listening to music then, so I couldn't test it. So we're going on the 99, which is a, a ring road that is around uh, Houston. And I'll get a chance. The speed limit here is 75. So I'll get a chance to test it out. See the speed limit there? 75. So I've got the windshield in the lower position, so I'm flowing as much air as I can. In other words, the noisiest position. And I'm hearing the radio pretty good. It's not as clear as if I was in my living room, of course. But uh, I think it's better than the Senna. You see, I'll turn it up a bit. Oh yeah. It's louder than the Senna. Oh, so I'm pleased. One of the reasons I, I, I want I didn't like the, one of the things I didn't like about the Senna was that uh, the volume 
was not high enough. I wear earplugs and I found that at cruising speed, uh, you know, 75, 80 miles an hour, with the windshield in the lowest position, I don't hear the music very well. I, I, it gets drowned out by wind noise a bit. But now with this, uh, and I'm riding with a Shoei RF 1200 helmet. Not with this, this communicator is, uh, is, is louder. The volume is louder. As a matter of fact, I just turned it down a bit. So I'm cruising back again at 80. And I'm listening to the music I can hear. I can understand the uh, announcer's voice. Uh, when if she's talking between the songs, I can uh, understand that. So that's great. So that test passed. The other reason I wanted to talk about, uh, or thing I wanted to talk about today, is that uh, for some reason, well not for some reason, I'm very thankful, even though I don't go out and explicitly ask for people to subscribe, but I'm very thankful that I've hit uh, the 500 subscriber mark. I've got 500 subscribers now to my little channel. And uh, very appreciative of those people who decided to subscribe. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to give a shout out to all the people who liked my videos so far and who subscribed to my channel. Uh, like I mentioned before, I have a slightly different reason for putting out my videos. I put out my videos because, you know, it's stuff that's interesting to me. I like making the videos and I need somewhere to store my videos other than just on my hard drive. So I figure I might as well store it in the cloud and where better to store it than YouTube. Uh, several of my videos that are popular are the DIY videos where I fix uh, work on the bike. And uh, so those are popular videos. And then I also record from time to time for my own reasons. I record when I go traveling and uh, oh, there's a lawn chair on the side of the road. I record when I go traveling, you know, visiting the various cities. I might do a walkabout or something like that. So I'll record that. And of course, uh, occasionally I'll record also when we go RV camping or go camping, you know. So those are the three main things that I like to record. The bike, camping, and traveling. These are the things I like to record on my channel. And apparently 503 people, as of, as of this morning, 503 or 504, uh, have subscribed. And um, so very, very appreciative of you guys. Thank you very much for subscribing. And uh, I invite anybody else who watch my videos and uh, they want to be informed of... Oh, what's going on in front? <laughs> Some kind of police action. And they want to be informed of when new videos come in. I'll just ask you this one time now. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and click on the little bell to be notified whenever I do put out a video. And uh, you'll be up to date with my channel and with the videos I put out. I don't have any set schedule for posting videos. I post videos whenever I feel like it. And uh, it's usually fairly often actually. And um, so if you like my videos and you're interested in seeing what I got to say on the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and click the bell and you'll get notified. And I also invite you to like any videos that you watch you find useful. Hit the like button and uh, show your appreciation that way. It takes, a, it takes an effort to actually uh, put together a video. You know, it takes some time to go do the editing and, and all of that stuff. And uh, so, the very least that uh, somebody who gets something out of the video can do is to click the like button. Uh, if you didn't get something uh, out of the video or you didn't like the video for some reason, you can also go ahead and click the, the, the thumbs down button. I don't mind that, but what I do appreciate is if you leave some kind of a constructive comment. I'm no expert in making videos, so, you know, maybe I'll learn something from you, get some feedback. So leave a, leave a comment, a constructive comment, and I'll see what I can do to improve. Of course, I appreciate comments. I answer all comments. And so go ahead and leave a comment on the video. Uh, you know, and I like that too. 
So I think what I'll do today, since I'm finished testing this, uh, what is this guy doing? Since I'm finished testing the headset uh, at cruising speed, and I'm happy with that, I'm going to go up to the dealership now and see if by any chance I can put my eye on the 1250. They're probably going to have it on the inside uh, in amongst all the other bikes and I probably won't get a chance to see it, but just for a laugh I'm going to go, just for something to do, right? I'm going to go and see if they've got it where I can see it through the showroom window. Of course today is Sunday so they're closed, but uh, I'm out for a ride so I'll stop by and see what, going, what, what what's going on. I'm in Houston for the next three weeks or so and then I head off overseas again. I go to Brazil. So my next walkabout uh, video may be from Brazil, depending on if I get some time to do that. Rio de Janeiro! Oh, it's so good to be back on the bike. Oh, man. Oh, this is so sweet. I miss this. When I go abroad and I go traveling for business, uh, I get withdrawal symptoms, man. By the time I come back, I gotta go for a ride. Got a lot of wires in my oh another thing that I should mention is since I had to run this new this microphone back again in the helmet I had to pull out my padding and all of that stuff and what I did was I bought a Y connection I probably put a little picture of the Y connection that I bought but the beauty about one of the things about this cardo system is that uh, it uses, the speakers use, use a, 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 a three and a half millimeter audio plug to plug into the, uh, to the headset, to the master set, uh, you know, to the head control unit. So that means that you can disconnect your speakers, upgrade your speakers, and you can also put in a Y connection in there so that your output goes to the speakers as well as goes to um, something like a, a micro recorder, you know, a micro audio recorder. Uh, I forget what you call those things, anyway. It's something that you can take dictation to or, or uh, lecture notes or whatever, right? So, what I intend to do is to connect my uh, little Sony uh, recorder when I go um, for a ride with my wife so that anything that she says that's coming through the speakers that I'm hearing, I'll be able to record that on this and then when I edit the video, I'll have two audio tracks to go blend and then I'll be able to hear her on, on the on the vlog or on the video. So I'm looking forward to trialing that out. Okay, let's turn into the dealership. I turned a little wide because just at the last minute I saw some uh, grass clippings there on the junction. Oh, there's somebody there. You don't want to slip on grass clippings. Maybe he put the grass clippings there. <laughs> so 
хороши. I'm at Premium Motorcycles of the Woodlands, which used to be called BMW of the Woodlands, BMW Motorcycles of the Woodlands. Uh, they sell BMWs, Indians, and uh, Triumph motorcycles. And I just dropped by to see if I can put my eyes on the new R1250 RS, and I have indeed done so. Uh, they're inside there, and I took a couple of snapshots. And uh, so I'll be by next week, next weekend maybe, to take a test drive and then to put a video on the website. But for now, I'm going to head on back and continue my my ride for today. I've always passed this park and wonders, wondered what it was all about. Some state forest park. I don't know what this is. Let's see what the sign says. William Goodrich Jones State Forest. So it's a little state forest that you can go for a walk in, I guess. It's kind of nice. I'm not going to stop here today, but I uh, just wanted to see what it's all about as I was passing by. So this is the 1488 and um, my gas light is on. It says that I need to get gas. My range is about 50 miles. I'm much less than 50 miles away from home. So, I intend to uh, to go get some gas before I go home, and uh, and that should be the, the end of the ride and the vlog.
Oh well folks, uh, I think I'm going to end this video here. Uh, it's been a great ride so far. I'm not too far from home. I'm going to go buy some gas and then ride through some subdivisions to get back to home. So it's going to kind of be boring. So I won't subject you to any more boring uh, riding than is necessary. Um, I did say what I wanted to say on this vlog. And I got a little bit of twisty, uh, twisty riding in there. And uh, hopefully the footage looks good. And um, I sign off for now and see you on the road. Keep the shiny side up and take care. Talk to you the next in the next video.